This song will definitely end up in the charts. It was composed by an Austrian songwriter um, to support our activities around 5th of May this year. And if you want to help us on our way into the charts, then please download it from our webpage and use it as often as possible. At least you see a lot happened since we met last time. A song was composed. Dear friends, it is already over one year that we had the virtual Semmelweis conference due to the COVID situation. With 350 registered attendees, it was one of our most successful conferences and a fantastic opportunity to stay in touch with all of you, even though we could not meet in person. You might remember some of the lectures, some of the impressive lectures back then, starting with Professor Didier's keynote about clean hospitals, but also followed by many case studies how people manage the COVID situations in their hospitals and in their intensive care units. We had Biljana Karevich from Belgrade, we had Emesh Shidagi from Budapest, Elke Schindler from Villa, Hans Herting, and many others. You might also remember what Professor Pite predicted about the COVID pandemic back then over a year ago. He announced that summer 2021 would become quite easy. But in fall 2022, despite the vaccinations and all the testing campaigns, there will be new COVID mutations, which will again lead to new waves and possible lockdowns over the winter. How right he was. He suggested that it will become May 2022 before we see a normalization and a change from the pandemic situation to the endemic situation. I believe we all must admit and acknowledge that his predictions were pretty accurate, other than that of many politicians. So let's all hope that he was also right with May 2022 and the time to follow. The extreme increase of COVID cases uh, from January 2022 on, especially in Austria, was also one of the reasons why we decided to plan for the next Semmelweis conference only in the year 2023, which was originally intended to be organized this year in 2022. However, we wanted to offer something instead. Uh, we didn't want to lose the contact to all of you for such a long time, and therefore we decided to organize um, a series of expert lectures throughout the year, the so-called 
Semmelweis Talks. It is a new format, and today is the first of five Semmelweis Talks in 2022. I'm very happy and honored to moderate this first Semmelweis Talk. And at the beginning, I would like to thank Igel Bidet and Monica Julen, who are today's speakers. I wanted to thank my team for organizing the lecture, and I wanted to thank Schulke for sponsoring the event. The Semmelweis talk will last around one and a half hours. We will always try to keep them at Tuesday, three in the afternoon, and we will cover at least one main topic from the field of hospital hygiene and infection prevention with two speakers, including a short discussion and a question of a Q&A session and a surprise. The song was the first surprise this time, but it's not the only one. There is a second one coming. For today, the topic of the first Samwise talk is the importance of humor as a success factor in hospital hygiene. Especially after two exhausting years of COVID, I think it's a brilliant topic. And it is closely related to an initiative which we started here in Austria a few months ago. Um, in preparation of the 5th of May, the International Day of Hand Hygiene, we decided to cooperate with the Red Noses Hospital Clowns Organization and use their professional clowns to raise the awareness and explain the topic of correct hand hygiene. I'm proud to present you our second little surprise here, a video that shows two clowns explaining the official WHO method of proper hand hygiene. very important for us to involve Ignat Semmelweis in this little video and you saw him uh, indicating that these two people should disinfect their hands properly. Um, if you like the video, please feel free to download it from our web page and use it uh, as often as you want for your own purpose. That was the idea why we have created it in the first place. It can be shown on all monitors, in hospitals, in waiting rooms, in doctor's offices, in daycare clinics, wherever a screen is available to inform and uh, train patients and visitors. Aside from this very fruitful cooperation with the clown doctors, we also have extended our Semmelweis team by a general secretary who will support us on a full-time job basis, Johannes Schul. And I would like to introduce Johannes to you briefly. Johannes, what made you join the Semmelweis Foundation? Hi, Bernard. Uh, thank you very much. Um, just a few words uh, about myself. Um, I grew up in Vienna. I hold a business degree and an MBA at the VU Vienna. Uh, I finished the trainee program uh, at the Austrian Federation of Industry. And uh, I had... Uh, a few uh, years experience in Brussels um, before returning to Vienna uh, to start a family. Uh, I got to know Bernhard uh, a few years ago and uh, he already told me about the Samuelweiss Foundation and his vision how to grow the organization. And uh, But back then um, I was the managing director of a different lobbying organization and uh, so we just brainstormed uh, a few ideas and uh, not much more, to be honest. 
So, uh, but during COVID pandemic, uh, I came to realize that the thing I care most about is the safety and health of my family. And uh, this made me think uh, whether I, I, it made me question my professional focus and um, pivoting towards something more purposeful and more meaningful. So um, when I met Bernard again uh, on a different topic, he offered me the position. And uh, a few months later, I quit my old job and joined the Semmelweis Foundation. So, <laughs> good decision. I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited uh, to be to be part of the the Semmelweis idea. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah. we have something uh, yeah. quite interesting in the pipeline, um, which we are very happy to share with you uh, on a, at a later stage this year. And uh, we're working and strengthening our strategic partnerships uh, and uh, working towards engaging more uh, into science related topics as well as uh, health awareness issues. So, thank you very much uh, and enjoy the talk. Thank you, Hannes, uh, for joining us. And you will definitely see Hannes more frequently. He will, he will help us to increase our speed and also to uh, improve and increase our activity level. Now it is time for the first lecture. And it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce Professor Pitay to you. Since most of you know him well, let me just summarize in brief. He is Professor in Hospital Epidemiologist at the University Hospital in Geneva. He is Director of the WHO program, um, Clean Care is Safe Care. He's Director of the WHO Infection Control Program. Of course, he's author of hundreds of scientific papers, most of them in top journals. He is recipient of several national and international honors. He is advisor to the French government and to President Macron. And most importantly, he is honorary president of the Semmelweis Foundation. The importance of humor as a success factor in hospital hygiene, he gave please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bernard. May I share my screen? I so far don't have the the possibility to share my screen. So could you give me the authorization to share my screen? So humor and hospital hygiene, and as I like to start all my talks, it's welcome to the hospital. Infections are waiting for you at the entrance door of the hospital, and unfortunately will complicate your hospital stay. And as we all now know, uh, Hand washing is certainly, or hand hygiene, should we say, is certainly the most important way. To, uh, sorry, there, there, are, there are microphones that are open that are coming back to my ears. So if people could close their microphone, that would be very, much better for me. Thank you very much. So hand washing is certainly the primary measure to reduce healthcare associated infection. And as you know, several years ago, we started this revolution in hand hygiene, replacing hand washing with uh, soap and water considered as an action of the past uh, with alcohol-based hand rubbing, the new standard of care. Now, effect of hu humor in advertising is well known. In advertising, it is demonstrated that humor is a an effective method to attract uh, attention. Using humorous and positive messages encourages or promotes behavioral change and knowledge acquisition. Humor strengths, or in other words, humorous attention gaining mechanisms and humor message relatedness have a positive impact on memorizing the message. Well, these are several publications, but this publication by Klein is certainly very attractive and very interesting. Humor in healthcare, preventive health, preventive health campaigns, humor-based material are uh, used effectively in preventive uh, campaigns to prevent alcohol and tobacco use on consumption, obesity, and cancer. It is made to draw attention, to reduce negative emotional responses, such as fear, anxiety, and embarrassment to disturbing health topics and to increase acceptance of health messages and 
behavior change. Humor can be used in infection prevention and control. Training uh, used humor, IPC training by the use of the same messages and the same materials for teaching may result in healthcare workers feeling bored and over messaged. Traditional training may also cause less comprehension of the key messages and educational games and creative hands-on activities can be used in IPC training to stimulate sustainable learning and team spirit. Let me give you some examples. Here is the case of an interactive audio, uh, uh, if you want audit and feedback strategy for hand hygiene that was implemented using a card game in a large academic center. It was what we call a splat game where you had cards and every time you, you could see somebody who would not be compliant with hand hygiene, you will give him a card. The first person on each shift to give all their cards away and not obtain any card in return was offered coffee gift cards donated by the medical director of the institution. Well, the results were kind of interesting because implementing the game was associated with an improvement in hand hygiene adherence, um, increasing from 87% in, in 2017 uh, to 90% in 2018, and it continued to improve. C. difficile infection rate decreased from 17% six months before the intervention to 3.7% six months after the intervention, and you have the reference uh, in the, uh, the, the slide below, as you can see. Now, another example is this example uh, as part of an education session at St. Joseph Health Centers, where staff had to remove their gown and gloves without getting any of the pudding on their skin or clothes. It's called a PPE, pudding game. The game was meant to uh, mimic the potential for transmission of bacteria by healthcare providers. I would encourage you to access this reference that is quite funny. Other examples at the University of Geneva Hospitals, we created an Escape COVID-19, a serious game to promote safe IPC practices among healthcare workers and other hospital employees during the COVID-19 pandemics, a very funny game that was extremely successful it was, of course, a serious game, but a serious game for entertain, train, and improve knowledge of the healthcare workers. I encourage you to read the publication that was published in GMIR Serious Games in 2020. How humor can be used in IPC? Well, of course, in awareness raising campaign, humorous material, whether posters, reminders, screensaver, and so on may help to capture healthcare worker attention. And that's the goal on all the images that you can see here, including some of them that have been the subject of publications. Additional examples in the field of nudging. Nudge, nudges remember, re, re, reminders were based in this case on well-known song lyrics that have been developed and hand hygiene compliance significantly improved from 31 to 68% in 10 wards with the new reminders and multimodal hand hygiene promotion st strategy, of course. And you will see here, the paper has been published in Journal of Infection Prevention. And you see here in the 10 different wards, the improvement. Obviously, as you look at the different curves, it worked better in some words as to compare to others, which is totally expected by this type of strategy. The next slide shows you some other examples using emoji tools that are created by using avatars of employees to remind the key IPC practices to the healthcare workers. They are designed to give a brief information at a short time to actually make it easy to remember the topic. The results, according to this experience and this publication, 
are for a 50% increase in compliance detected on key IPC practices. How humor can be used in IPC. You can do poster, photos, song, video contest, and so on and so on. We have heard a nice uh, uh, song about the Semmelweis uh, at the beginning of this session. We have seen a nice uh, uh, red nose cl clowns uh, sketch. You can do all sorts of contests and make sure that for IPC activities, they can motivate frontline staff to show their enthusiasm, creativity, and team spirit. Let me show here to you a photo contest that we made uh, on the occasion of the 5th of May, 2022 at the University of Geneva Hospitals. And you see here, teams were encouraged to take photos and be imaginative and creative. And you see on the left-hand side, a large alcohol-based hand rub bottle that is held by uh, the, uh, the entire team of nurses uh, from one of the world. And on the right-hand side, another way of picturing the people on the world according to old uh, ancient pictures. Humor in scientific publications. In the left-hand side, you have a, a, a cartoon on keeping hospitals clean uh, that is actually crucial to patient safety issues. On the right-hand side, you have a cartoon that stimulates bad science that may impact public health. So as you can see, those cartoons are humoristic, but they are also very educational. And that's very important to realize that. Humor can be in media. You can use uh, stars, you can use a uh, cartoonist. In this case, standard precaution are efficacious and cost-effective is telling uh, these men to this woman, washing their hands or even Titov, the famous Titov, who is here rubbing his hands and here explaining to you for children at school, what are the important aspects of infection prevention at time of COVID. Humor in media, as you find it in the newspaper, in this case, you see about COVID certificate, uh, a picture with this, uh, this, this, this COVID certificate equivalent that was uh, with this, this link that you can get, for sure, the copy of uh, Didier Pitet was the legend of this cartoon. On the right-hand side, there are consequences if someone on the floor doesn't wash their hands. As you can see here, a strange technique to actually block the hands so that they couldn't uh, actually be dirty as far as you, know, as you see, but of course, they cannot be either cleaned in these conditions, but this is funny cartoon. Next slide. Under mental hygiene, as you know, patient area under mental surfaces play a very important role in the transmission of all healthcare associated pathogens. Also, both hand hygiene and under mental hygiene represent basic horizontal interventions to prevent cross transmission, there is a need for both interventions to be recognized as interdependent. Several technologic interventions to augment environmental hygiene have been recently developed, but remain to be objectively evaluated in well-designed clinical studies. Here on the right-hand side, I have gathered all my knowledge and have come to the conclusion that you will be sent to hospital quarantine. Quite a funny cartoon used in the context of awareness raising by our new initiative, uh, Clean Hospital Initiatives. I will come back later on the Clean Hospital Initiatives, uh, the topic of my last lecture during the last uh, uh, Semmelweis uh, video uh, meeting. Now, the next slide is again under mental hygiene. According to a recent systematic review, and you have the references at the bottom part of the slide, um, improving healthcare environmental hygiene helps keep patients safe. And this is absolutely key. Most studies demonstrated that intervention in the hospital environment were related with lower healthcare-associated infections and or patient colonization. 
This work has been conducted in the context of the Clean Hospitals Initiative, improving environmental hygiene, which is really absolutely key in our hospitals today. Oregon Patient Safety Commission, training for environmental service staff, or uh, EVS. As you can see here, you see on the left-hand side, a funny picture, on the right-hand side, initially, deep clean restrooms, general area increased to two times a day, patient rooms and restrooms increased to three times a day. You see very, very, very lim uh, simple cartoons to help educate. Well, importantly, Centers for Diseases Control and Prevention in the USA, so-called CDC, have developed for EVS, environmental uh, uh, services uh, uh, staff, in fact, and the battle against infection graphic novel. So they have developed a novel in order to share and understand and share the practice. Very, very interesting initiative, as you may say. Here is, uh, again, some of the cartoons, and I would encourage you to access the website from CDC and look at those cartoons carefully. Environmental cleaning during COVID-19. Again, you are cleaning this area once every hour. Look spotless to me. Well, the virus can't be seen, so we can only clean harder. So you see this type of humor, this type of cartoons are there to actually promote the discussion, promote the reaction, promote a change in the behavior. And in this case, in environmental cleaning, that is so important. Uh, in conclusion, in advertising, it is demonstrated that humor is an effective method to attract attention. Using humorous and positive messages, encourage and promote behavior change and knowledge acquisition. Humor strengths and humor message relatedness have a positive impact on memorizing the message. And last but not least, the impact of humor on compliance with optimal IPC practices deserves more research. However, Humor can be used as a powerful tool to, for delivering key infection control messages in a memorable and engaging way. Last but not least, our next key events of the year would be the Clean Hospitals Day on the 20th of October, 2022. I will all encourage you to participate that would be our worldwide awareness raising campaign for clean hospitals. That will also be, uh, there will be also an in presence one day international conference on healthcare environmental hygiene held in Geneva in Switzerland for one day. And there will be the Weber uh, international teleclass on the clean hospitals day that usually uh, reach between 60 and 80,000 participants. So I would say, don't miss it. Don't miss to participate to the Clean Hospitals Initiative. The next slide is telling you a day without laughter is a day wasted, as Charlie Chaplin would have said. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Didier, for this uh, inspiring lecture. Um, we knew that it would not be possible to come up with ideas that you haven't already thought of. And humor is definitely something that you have been working with for, for many, many years. Um, I would like to, to mention something to our audience. If you have questions to Didier or also to the second lecture, please write your questions to the chat. And after the discussion, we will have a Q&A session. We will read all the questions and uh, try to answer them as good as possible. Thank you very much, Didier, for showing us this broad variety of tools that are available in, 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 the, in the field of humor. And it wouldn't be Didier Pitet. You showed the scientific 
facts of the effect of these measures as well. So it really gives us tools in our hands that can be used. And the request to all our listeners is a lot is available. Please make use of it. It's a fantastic uh, portfolio of, of uh, tools of humor that can be used for improving the hospital hygiene situations in every hospital. Now, um, thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll meet later when, when we have the discussion then. Now it's time to move on to the second lecture and to um, move into the magic field of the clown world. It is my great honor and my great pleasure to introduce Monica Churin to you. She is the founder and the CEO of the Red Nose Clown Doctors International, which she founded in 1994. Before that, she had a professional career as a public relations expert and the protocol officer at INSEAD in Fontainebleau and at OPEC. She also holds numerous national and international honors. She was the president of the European Foundation of Hospital Clowns Organization until last year and the president of the Austrian Fundraising Foundation until recently. She's a lecturer at many universities uh, around the world not only because she's an activist and expert for clown doctors, but she's also a champion in the field of psycho-mental health. Red Gnosis, how can we support the hospital hygiene in the Central Eastern European field? Monica, please. Thank you very much, Bernhard. Um, this is um, wonderful. Um, I think it's very nice that I can be talking to you here. You might be a bit uh, surprised, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I'm not even an artist, so what am I doing here? The only thing I can offer you is that we, uh, that I manage, kind of, uh, some 480 clowns throughout uh, 12 countries, maybe we show a little bit the part, uh, no, the next one, no, the other one. The first one? This one? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, this is maybe one third of our clowns. So, uh, as you can see, so you can imagine it's a really crazy crowd, but uh, all of them are very professional performing artists. They have been going through, most of them, a two year. Um, education and training for this specific uh, work uh, in hospital as a clown, using the art of clowning, which is something very special, and, and I'll tell you a bit about it. So our mission is we bring humor and laughter to people in need of joy. What does uh, people in need of joy, what does it mean? Uh, it means, um, like, let me, let me tell you a bit, uh, uh, about it, uh, because uh, when 30 years, when this idea came up uh, that uh, one could use clowns in hospital, it was uh, very uh, new and of course hospitals were absolutely against it. They, they told them, you're crazy, come once a year, make a little show, uh, uh, but to be twice a week in the hospital, make a chaos, make noise, make all our children nervous, it makes a uh, medical staff more nervous even impossible so it took us quite some time i mean we weren't convinced ourselves but we thought it might be an idea um how can we how can we try this i have to say that i myself uh, when i was a small child i was in hospital nearly eight months nine months um and later i was in the uh, sanitary um, sanatorium san sanatory for compulsions for the lungs and uh, this was a place like in the 19th century. It was dreadful for children. I was the whole day, I was frozen in fear. The night I was flying through. Um, I think if I would have had some plans at this time, I'm sure it would have given me some consolation. So that's why I maybe also liked the idea about uh, clowns in hospital. And um, so, we convinced the hospital, we started uh, the thing, and the clowns came in, you know, they were playing music, they were making jokes, they were stupid, they were funny. All of a sudden, the children were laughing. And after already after four or five weeks, when we came to the hospital, the medical staff told us, it's very strange, but something has really uh, changed in our wards. The spirit has changed, the atmosphere has changed. 
the children are a bit lighter and even we as medical staff you know it's a relief for us uh, there's some laughter there's some lightness um, so we really like it to continue and this was nearly 30 years ago we were one of the first organizations in europe to do this and um, we um, we started a long and i can tell you very adventurous journey can we have the next one <laughs> so um okay so as you can see we are we are uh, based uh, in, in in central and eastern europe uh, in in many countries where we have uh, uh, very professional organizations who are really having their program in most of the important hospitals in in the countries and we are also um, having uh, special missions to emergency and crisis areas uh, wherever we are needed here we see for example greece uh during during the uh since the start actually 2015 we have been working in the refugee camps and now we have a steady program for refugees we started already in uh also in 2014 in uh, in the middle east uh, to go to the refugee camps uh, in the Ukraine since 2014, we have been working a lot, uh, many times with, uh, uh, at that time, IDPs, internally displaced people. So, uh, and in Africa, we are working with uh, the big uh, humanitarian organizations like Médecins Sans Frontières uh, in specific um, uh, clinics in the bushes, uh, where well, there needs education to the people, not to be full of fear for the doctors, but to accept it. So we have quite a uh, experience uh, with this. So actually, we are in 580 medical in institutions regularly working. So we're really kind of part of the hospital, and um, and we know about the necessities also to bring. Uh, educational topics uh, to the patients. We have programs, you know, not only children, of course, we started with the children, but we have uh, uh, a wonderful program with senior patients, uh, which is beautiful because it's a place of tremendous sadness and uh, silence and uh, non communication. And when the clowns come, all of a sudden in a room, everybody starts connecting with each other. Uh, there are songs, there's dancing, it's always flirting. Um, and uh, it's very nice. One, one old lady once said, you know, when the clown come, it's like an uh, interview with life. And we really love it. Uh, we are working with rehabilitation patients. This is also important, uh, for example, because we help uh, patients to, to do the necessary and painful treatments and Clowns help them in a funny way to overcome uh, difficult situations. We are working with children with special needs uh, with a specific show where we teach them, for example, um, to use all their senses. It's, it's also it's a beautiful program. We're just now uh, developing with the help of the European Union um, to develop a program for children with autism disorder. Also, it's also a teaching kind of way, in humorous way. Uh, of course, people with dementia, and uh, and as we said already, vulnerable people in crisis and emergency situation. I'll talk a bit more about it later on. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we, you will you will ask me. Um, that's nice, but could anybody do this? Why clowns? Um, I think it's important to think about it that the clown, a funny figure, a jester, has been throughout all um, mankind uh, been part uh, and at the side of kings, of chiefs, of uh, uh, witch doctors, of medical men. And uh, why is this so? Because it's this wonderful way of how humor works if you uh humor is something that you you are in the situation um uh, whatever there is um you step back i think it was slow to die who said uh, um 
we we need humor when our capacity for ravage is uh, is not working anymore. So we have to to go into the field of humor in order to support it. And um, when we step back uh, and look at it from different angles, of course, our horizon widens. Uh, the, the problem as such is not the only important thing we focus on. We, we start opening up to other creative solutions, to other um, feelings about it. Uh, we don't take ourselves in the middle so important because the, around is a lot of other things. So that's why maybe um, humor and humorous people and clowns in special um, are, have a certain wisdom. You can listen to them. They will show you ways out of difficult uh, situations or at least give you the hope that you can get out of a difficult situation. It's funny to know that, for example, for astronauts in space, it's now a demand. Um, and I don't know how they're advanced they are, but I think it's a good idea that if they stay in space for a longer period, that they also have kind of a jester with them, a person who is there to entertain them in a certain way. So you see it's necessary in all fields of, uh, of life. Um, let's, there's more to say about the clowns, uh, uh, because the clowns, the clown is a magic figure who meets us on a very deep emotional level. You know, the clown is, um, um, he is naive and he is a very, a very true um, character who uh, looks at the, at the situation and at the world and at the reality uh, from a very naive and but intensive way. And uh, uh, what he does is, a clown mirrors our feelings. Uh, he mirrors our um, all our weaknesses, our fears, uh, our desires, uh, our little lies, our vanities, uh, our also our need for love and acceptance, and all of this on a very deep level. And uh, uh, that's why uh, we, we understand the clown, and that's why uh, when we step back, we know a lot about ourselves, it's not really touching us, we, we laugh about the other, actually we're laughing about ourselves. Um, it is uh, it is a really very, it, it's, a, it's a very, there, there was one, there was one situation that the child, for example, uh, who would not talk to anybody, in, was autistic, traumatized in hospital and he wouldn't talk to anybody, and then the clown came in and like this, they started a conversation. They were a bit fresh and they were a bit naughty and uh, and he was talking, they were talking. And then uh, when the clown left, uh, the, 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 he was asked, uh, do you like the clown? And yes, I like it very much, but why do you like it? He says, the clown is the only one who understands me. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's about the thing, you know, being met on this deep human level, you, you also connect to yourself, which is very important. Um, the clown also lives in the present, and this is, as you know, one of the best states we can have to be, to be totally in the present. He does not uh, feel the pain and the sadness and the melancholies uh, and, the, uh, and the troubles of the past. And uh, at that moment, we also don't worry about uh, about the future, uh, but we are in the present. And cl the clown looks at it, what is it now? And how difficult this can be, he always has the desire to make the best out of it. And if it's stupid enough, doesn't matter, how can we make the best out of it? And this is what empowers the people, empowers people in crisis situation, empowers sick people who are desperate and lonely and, and all by themselves. So, um, this is this is how we work. Let me tell a bit, you a bit more about uh, our clown work so that you understand uh, in the context. Um, we uh, the clown is basically it's a psychosocial support. Uh, we we use the mechanisms of humor to promote the well-being of the patient. We're a bit too far, but doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, 
um, humor helps um, shifting the focus away from unpleasant procedures, and that's really that's really fine, you know. Uh, there's one there's one story, for example, that there was a child who just did not want to get uh, infusion or get uh, get blood taken and so on. So the client comes and says, "Okay, don't worry, we have a magic glove for you." So they put on a magic glove here, you know. And they say, "Okay, let's see. Do you do you feel anything? No." Oh, Come on, take something and do it yourself. Okay, wonderful. Uh, uh, there's no pain. And why they are doing this? They are putting on the magic glove on the other hand, on the other arm, and it's gone in a minute, you know. And uh, so we have we have a lot of um, uh, one little one little story which I really like <laughs> is um, uh, also our clowns are going with the um, with the patients uh, uh, with a little patients, especially with children, uh, to the operation to the, in the surgery room uh, in order to really help in, in this difficult uh, period of preparation for the, for the operation and, uh, and going into, into anesthesia, which is very fearful for the children and more fearful for the parents, even they are sometimes more shocked than the children. So um, there was one little story. So there was a little girl, and she was she was in preparation for the operation, and the parents were stand sitting at their side, and they went they were very um, uh, anxious and trying not to show their anxiousness, which is also very difficult. And the child, of course, uh, notices the the tightness of the parents. <laughs> so the clown comes in and says, "Ah, oh, my little princess." How beautiful! Finally, I find my little princess. Aren't you beautiful? And then he starts curling her. He's he's singing love songs to her, and he is fully in love with her. And she starts smiling, of course. And then he says, "You know, you are my sleeping beauty. You know, we we'll walk now into this room over there. There will be the fairy. She will make you sleep. I'll be at your side. And but don't worry, I'm your prince." I'll come and I'll wake you up again. And it happens like this. The child starts, goes in without fear, is getting into, into anesthesia without anxiousness. The parents outside are also relieved. And as we hear from a study, uh, that operations when the children, when you go into the operation, in a relaxed way, it's very good for the operation. It's also good for waking up, and it's also good for for recovery. So these are little little things we can we can do. Um, do we have another PowerPoint. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, we had it, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. Let's continue. <laughs> so there are. Uh, there are, of course, um, in our yeah here, uh, we are what I especially want to talk to them. We have, of course, we can facilitate the transmission of important health-related contents um, through interactive play and non-formal education components a lot. Um, it's not only in hospital, uh, but it's um, specifically. Uh, in, in, in various areas. Actually, in, in hospital, uh, we have a special program with the children, which, which is called the Circus Patientus, which means the children who are long-term patients um, are trained uh, circus skills, little circus skills, uh, regardless, either on their bed or if they can be outside the bed, and they, they make a performance. And... Uh, and uh, then it's the performance is shown to the parents and the and the siblings and the and the medical um, uh, the medical staff. Uh, but what happens is that the children are really they are the hero of the shows and they feel very empowered because in hospital you are you are absolutely in a in a situation where you are uh, the victim around you. You know you are you are inactive. You cannot. Basically, we cannot do anything. But uh, what uh, what we say, what we think is that in every patient, it's uh, only a part is sick, and there is another part which is healthy and needs uh, reinforcement. 
Okay, so why actually, I mean, Professor Pitet has shown us so many, I don't need anything now. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Pitet has uh, uh, shown us so many funny, really fabulous uh, ideas and, uh, and uh, humorous, humorous uh, uh, cartoons uh, that uh, how can, how can uh, we relate um, the sensuous and serious topic of, of hand hygiene. Um, is it necessary? Can we do something? And I think we also can contribute uh, to your uh, very important campaigns. Um, currently, as, as you have seen, um, Red Noses was making a, a supporting the campaign of, of Samuel Weiss here, first, first here in Austria. Uh, they also with the song, they, they had a, a choreography, they were dancing with the song and you know, making light music. And in 20 hospitals, they performed during the day, uh, these uh, choreography in all the, all the uh, corridors, uh, and it was a huge success. And we, have, we also have uh, the videos which we put to the disposition of hospitals. The videos were shown also in all over um, Austria on info screens, on public info screens uh, on, on May 5th, but it was also, it is also now to the disposition of hospitals to show it as Bernard yeah. already told us. Um, uh, so our experience in delivering messages is very high. Um, for example, hygiene is one of the major topics in um, in refugee camps, especially with uh, Middle East and Eastern and African um, uh, immigrants and refugees. So uh, in, in cooperation with the international humanitarian organizations, uh, we discuss the topics and then we adapt accordingly. So there's hygiene, washing your hands, uh, washing, washing your hair, brushing your teeth, washing your, dre your, your dresses. Uh, uh, collecting garbage uh, uh, are big topics. Another big topic is also uh, we have had a lot of um, yeah. <laughs> another topic is um, of course um, to go to school uh, and uh, non-violent uh, communication and non-violent uh, uh, solving of, of fights and problems. So we have a long um, a long experience. Uh, we very glad, of course, in hospitals also we have the hygiene uh, topics which we uh, teach our clients already from the very beginning. But uh, I think we can really actively support you in this in this uh, uh, campaign. Support you from all sides. Uh, make a funny make a funny. Um, uh, thing around it, but make it memorable uh, in people's in people's minds, and we are gladly doing so. And Catherine, we have already distributed the films to all our partner countries. You know, they they will distribute it to their hospitals. So whenever you're there, please take it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Monica, for this uh, really emotional and inspiring insight into the magic world of clowns. It is really impressive to see that they have built up almost 500 fully employed clowns in 12 countries. That is that is really amazing and, and fantastic. And we had the pleasure and the honor to work with them in the last month to build up this um, this intervention for May 5th. And it was really a phenomenal experience to see how inspired these people are and what and, and how, how full of good humor they are. So it's really great to work with these people and then and put something together. Um, I have to apologize because I just realized that we are looking to you into the auditory, but the camera is slightly above, so it looks like whether if we would look below you. So sorry, sorry for that, but we see all of you. Um, aside from from this, Monica has already mentioned this activity on May fifth, and uh, we have been active in twenty hospitals. The clowns have trained and practiced the Semmelweis song with the ukulele and uh, with other instruments. And uh, they went through the hospitals and they, they used this, this um, uh, handheld disinfection devices and, and handed it over to people and created a lot of attention, a lot of fun. 
and we wanted to show a few pictures and one video um, to 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 um, to explain you the, the, the whole initiative. This is um, a clown and the CEO of the Austrian clowns and Johannes in front of the Semmelweis uh, Memorial at the Medical University in Vienna, and. That was um, the, 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 the map. So we, we, we went through all the federal states of Austria, except Vorarlberg, but in all the other federal states, we had initiatives and we had these cloud events. Um, 20 hospitals is quite something. Um, this one is already the first video. Maybe you can, you can start this, this video. It shows what, what happened. like to especially thank the St. Joseph Hospital in Vienna for allowing us to take the films there. This is, this is, not, this is not typical. Um, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, video the, the, the patients and, and the staff, but we, we could video the clowns when they did their activities in the cafeteria, in the elevators, on the wards, everywhere. They spent hours in these 20 hospitals entertaining uh, people and it was, it was really a phenomenal experience. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? Yeah, on, on the on the lower right you see the, the team in the St. Joseph Hospital, and on the upper right you see uh, Elke Schindler in the middle of the of the clowns and her team in the in the federal hospital in Villa in, in Croatia. She also had a big intervention and she supported the clowns with everything that she could, and they really made a, a fabulous 5th of May day. And um, it's, it's very good that DDA mentioned the, the 20th of October um, as, as the Clean Hospital Day. And this could be a fantastic opportunity to have a next intervention and a second intervention. Um, um, after that, I would like to move forward to our discussion. Um, it was a lot of fun to do these, these interventions at the hospitals. Um, our common problem is in the field of hospital hygiene, how do we transport this topic um, to the public? How, we, how do we make patients, visitors, politicians and the public aware of the importance, importance of hand hygiene, uh, of the hand hygiene compliance, and how can we finally save more lives? This is one of the big um, topics that, that we all know. You know that journalists are very excited about COVID-19, but not about nosocomial infections. 
politicians spend billions uh, fighting the effects of COVID, but they close their ears when it comes to hospital associated infections. Um, this is one of the biggest problems. And with this, I would like to, to enter the discussion and ask my first question to Monica. Um, Monica, Professor Pitet once said that the Nobel Prize will be awarded to, to this person who can make the topic of nosocomial infections more attractive and more sexy. Could clowns help us to achieve that? How could that be done and how far could clowns take us? Uh, of course, I mean, I mean, we have just started it, you know, and uh, um, I, th I think we have a quite good relationship with uh, the media, you know, they, uh, they like us uh, uh, and they take us light. But also here, I think we can we can really um, make a topic, uh, a serious topic in a lighter and, and humorous way. So first of all, I think we can really start to, to run uh, videos uh, in hospital, you know, uh, focusing on the topic, uh, making people um, aware of it. Uh, we can, I mean, we have a lot of um, uh, research running now at the moment, you know. I mean, I mean we eventually could also research uh, how the humorous intervention really uh, can, can, make an impact uh, uh, on this topic. Uh, we will insight uh, what we also do. I don't know whether what, what this is important, but I'm thinking about it. We are uh, developing a very special uh, program for humor, humor training for hospital staff because it really can believe their daily work if they learn the tricks of how to use humor in their in interaction with the patient, but also uh, as, uh, as a team. And uh, um, we hope that this will be accredited uh, for, for universal studies also. We are on the way. Uh, and maybe this could be a topic we are also tackling, you know, how if we tell them how to make it um, funny and advisable to, to wash your hands, you know, to remind each other, uh, to tell also the parents and, and the children what to do. So we will try to support it as much as we can. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I would also like to, to ask this question to, to Didier. Uh, I mean, how, how, how could clowns help to transport this information to the public? Do you have any experience already or do you have any evidence how we can measure uh, the effect of clowns? Well, uh, speaking of hand hygiene, we are now in the, one of the first initiatives that we are uh, just started. It has nothing to do with humor. Uh, we have been linked to Manchester United, the football uh, team, and we have raised a concept with Manchester United about the safety of hygiene in the stadium. And hygiene goes from hand hygiene by the team, by the the management by the visitors of the stadium, so the, the if you want the fans, uh, up to the cleaning of the environment, the cleaning of uh, uh, the food and safety issues and so on. And I would be a first real attempt to really move hand hygiene and the concept of clean hospitals into the community, choosing the most world famous team in the world for uh, football, because this team is, of course, very famous in the UK, but also very famous in Asia and in all parts of the world. And as you know, in the team is the current, probably best player, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. So the idea is really to try to enter into the community using this approach. But I'm a strong believer, and thank you very much for this fantastic um, <clears throat> report and, 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 and touch with the, the red nose uh, approach with the clown, uh, because we have been using the clowns in our hospitals, in particular in the pediatric department for many years. And I can tell you that on a single individual basis, it is absolutely fantastic for the children. And usually they are the children with cancer and difficult disease and so on and so on. So I think this is, Clowns are a type of humor that is even 
much better than any type of humor because first of all, clowns are real humans. So they could really adjust, you know, as a function of what they want to transmit and as a function of what they want to get a smile and what at what speed and so on and so on. So I guess that we need to move into, into the community for sure. The hospital is certainly an outstanding field for experiments. Not that you know patients are guinea pigs, but because patients are suffer, suffering and because we can try to use those tools to transform behavior uh, in hospitals as well as the, in the community, but hospital is a little laboratory. And hospitals have been the laboratory for hand hygiene promotion. And now they will certainly, all those experiments would certainly be extremely uh, helpful in the community. That's why I think that working with clowns and humor and a, a right touch of humor is so important. I cannot hear you. Yeah. Monica wants to comment on what you so said. What you said, uh, Professor Bitte, that's very important. This is the direct um, uh, human communication. And it's it's the experience uh, of body and, and mind that you uh, that we can bring. It's not only visual, uh, it is a little adventure we are sharing and which we be kept in our minds um, very easily, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, absolutely. A question uh, to Didier. Uh, you, you showed us uh, before data that by using a humorous workplace reminder, you could reduce uh, the infection rate of Clostridium difficile. It, has any study been done with clowns? Did anybody already test the effect of the intervention of clowns in hospital hygiene? Sorry, the effect on? Did anybody... Um, investigate, scientifically investigate the effect of clowns in hospital, oh. hospital hygiene. No, I haven't seen any study looking at the effect of clowns uh, on hospital hygiene. I have seen studies, but I don't remember them so well uh, of the e effect of clowns on the humor, on the, on the fact that the children in particular would feel better uh, I've seen it, I've, I've witnessed it, but uh, scientific studies are lacking, but certainly that's a good topic. May I say something? Sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, we just um, under very serious discussions with the Department of uh, Arts and Health um, to really have a maybe not the world, right, but a very international study on the impact of, uh, of, of clowning interventions uh, uh, with patients. And maybe this could be one of the little topics we, can, we could add. At the, at, uh, but we are, we are now, uh, um, there, there are many little studies going on, but the big one uh, we are just trying now to set up. That's, that's an excellent. Wonderful. Well, wonderful scientific data data-based, evidence-based. Um, I think that was, that was a very, very uh, good uh, discussion point because, because clowns can help us to, 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 to attract the emotions, motivate people, transport the information even beyond the hospital. And the hospital is a very nice place for doing studies, for experimenting, because it is what it is. Um, I would like to move on to a second topic uh, that, that seems to be very important to me. It has been described that uh, the COVID uh, pandemic raised the hand hygiene compliance at the beginning, but later on it dropped again back to the same level um, for different reasons. Um, personally, I believe that humor and, and inspiration and positive motivation is a fantastic way to go, but is it enough? Is it enough to keep the, the, the level, the, the compliance level high? Is the carrot enough or do we need the carrot and the stick? You ask me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. <laughs> but, um, but I think um, there is this saying that uh, uh, dopamine, um, dopamine and endorphins are um, working uh, in with positive feelings it's it's uh, so when when you have a um, joy when you have a joke when you are laughing uh, when there is a humor intervention uh, these hormones are raised and um, 
and uh, fill the body with a pleasant feeling. I, I mean, there's Deepak Chopra, who's an Indian-American uh, doctor and philosopher, and he says, uh, whenever uh, the, the moment I, I have the feeling I'm happy, it's going into all cells of my body. It's an information which goes to all cells of my body. And of course, when we connect this routine eventually with a positive feeling, uh, we can have a behavioral, behavioral change. Um, and uh, we could try to see uh, how it works, you know. I, I absolutely agree. But with the positive motivation and, and, and all of that and the endorphins, um, 70 percent of the people will buckle up in the car. The other 30 percent, because the policeman says it's 45 dollars. Okay. Um, is the carrot enough, or do we also need the stick? We all we always need. I mean, it's it's never that one action can can do it, it but it's the combination, it's a contribution from all the different sides that we can uh, work together uh, and, and maybe really make the change we need. What is your view on that? Carrot or stick or both? Yeah, well, I think that uh, you just said you are not a scientist, but you are really uh, returning to the question as a scientist, because uh, what you just say is that we need a multimodal strategy to change behavior. And this is what we have demonstrated for hand hygiene. And the clowning uh, approach is certainly uh, part of a multimodal strategy of changing humor and changing behavior. And I think that's the way we should go. And yes, there is always a little bit of stick, but uh, ideally the carrots are, are there to help. So there is a little bit, always a little bit of the two of them in a multimodal strategy. We have the monitoring and feedback, you know, feedback could be very positive, but it could be also, also negative. Feedback is very important, uh, certainly. But I mean, to reinforce the feedback, to uh, sort of reinforce the education, to mobilize, to please people, to go to the same direction, to help motivation. I think all those, uh, all those methods that make you more happy are certainly uh, the best method on the long term to work with. Because remember, stick, stick, stick doesn't work on the long term, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have the feeling that um, it becomes maybe more, it's not only that you, you feel so good about it, but maybe it's in the, in the back of your brain, um, you know, which is, you know, when, whenever we're laughing, the whole brain starts lighting up. So in the back of your brain, we might have a good, a little bit of a good feeling when we do it without knowing it consciously. That's, yeah, this would be the important thing. Yeah, I'm, I think it's you are very right. I mean, when you look at the, the domain of music, it has been demonstrated that when you are either listening to music, creating music, or performing music, there are several area in the brain that are actually mobilized or even that are growing, and they are all linked to emotion. So I think that we haven't had this type of study in the field we are discussing now, but I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure, 100% 100 sure that all what brings emotion, new emotion, positive emotion, emotion is certainly extremely important to make people go in the right direction and, and sort of sustain a right change. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I, I appreciate that both of you focus on, on uh, positive motivation, endorphins, uh, but seeing it in the context of a multimodal approach, the stick has a function, but it's not the predominant way of, of moving people forward on the long term. And this long term view is, is, is very important. I have a third question, which is uh, one, one of my personal concerns, and I would like to understand whether you two see a chance that humor and especially clowns could help with this situation. In Austria, and probably in many other countries, the predominant problem is the high number of missing nurses. Uh, in the medical university, I know the, 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 the director of the, of the nursing care in the, in the in the, uh, in the medical hospital, and she says I could right away hire over a hundred nurses. These are empty, empty positions, and I don't have them. They are overworked. 
they, they have a low salary, they have a high uh, responsibility, they are exhausted, close to the burnout due to the two years of, of COVID, and the nursing schools are half empty. Now, this is a severe problem because from the nurses, we take the, the hygiene workers, we, we train the hygiene workers and the nurses and the hygiene workers, they are the, the backbone of hospital hygiene. But how, how do we want to increase hospital hygiene if nurses are missing? I mean, this is a, this is a vicious circle. Uh, and the question is, can we can we use clouds? Can we use humor? Can we use this positive approach to improve this the dramatic situation? Um, what we realize in this many years of very wide experience is uh, the problem of high stress and uh, and burnout among uh, yeah. uh, medical staff and field staff. And, and um, what we realize, I mean, we are regularly for field staff uh, in, in emergency and crisis areas. Um, they, the the Médecins Sans Frontières doctors, you know, they go into this um, uh, task of saving people people's life, and they work day and night, and they are so focused on on uh, uh, this difficult situation around them, and they forgot completely about themselves. So what? What we are doing regularly, we are giving them workshops on, we call them humor workshops, uh, but there are two kinds. There's one humor workshop where it's just a release, it's just having fun with each other, which gives them a lot of, uh, of help, but also how can I use humor for myself to, to rescue myself out of this stress? How can I learn to get out of this stress situation? And the funny thing is, uh, these doctors told them it was in the bushes where the children were dying one after the other, and they were hysterical about it, you know. And they said, we forgot that we are allowed to laugh. We forgot that we are allowed to have a good uh, situation in between. So what we can do is, how can we relieve uh, medical staff uh, mental well-being, uh, psychological stress, and... Maybe it also helps if people are not so burned out that, that uh, they will come back to do this. That's what I could say, you know. It's you. Yeah, well, fantastic uh, response. Thank you very much. I, I agree. I think that uh, we could certainly help in motivating people to go back to nursing school and to help people also to enjoy their job. We have been through these two years of COVID. People are tired. Uh, we have been difficult conditions in, in hospitals. I think about Italy where they have seen people dying. They have seen all the time. They have seen, so it, it is difficult, but we sort of can help people by uh, motivating them by all means so that they return at least to their job, realizing how their job is important and also recognizing them. And I'm absolutely positive about the role of uh, positive motivation and positive reinforcement with those techniques. And clowns are certainly unique uh, in this respect in hospitals to sort of, uh, uh, yes, as you said, uh, allow people to remember that they can smile and they can laugh and they can have a good time and, and they will if they are very positive. So this, this way we could certainly, and clowns could certainly help. Mm -hmm. for sure. we, uh, we, we have a couple of questions from the chat and the two questions are exactly uh, focusing on this topic. One question is, do you think humor should be part of the staff education in order to give them good, a good communication tool, which is another aspect, and how, how could that be achieved? This is exactly what we're what we discussing. And the second is, did you notice any effect on staff when you work in hospitals? Yes, this is a fabulous uh, question. I really like it because uh, we have been doing a lot of uh, workshops for hospital staff, but we are now, we are you know, we have the International School of Humor. There's a curriculum, a basic curriculum for our clowns. But we have now, we are now establishing the academy, which um, which educates specialists. And one of the, the academy um, branches branch is specifically a humor workshop for medical staff and for field staff. 
because we have seen how much we could uh, support uh, medical staff and how what what a desire it is you know we, we, we've seen people making it in afterwards they were crying because it was so relieved and it was so wonderful and i'm feeling so good and, and i understand myself and i take care of myself and i take care of the others in a different way so um this is really one of the it's a big project in the Red Noses group. We built it up very professionally, also based on, on a scientific background, on um, knowledge uh, about um, the effects of humor and how to use it and, and how to apply it and uh, also make people know that in every difficult situation, there are moments you can celebrate life and just do it. Yeah, absolutely key. Absolutely key. I, I fully agree. I think that uh, everything we can do to make people more secure, more uh, self-confident, including the fact of being able to uh, have humor entering into the, the discussion. I mean, sometimes with patients, using humor is extremely powerful. Uh, of course, we need good science, good results, whatever, but your feeling for years of contact with patients is definitely extremely important. I've been using humor uh, in, in many instances in my practice, and I will continue to do so. So I will really encourage, uh, uh, yes, people to be trained, and uh, if it would be possible to have clowns at medical and nursing school, uh, schools coming to make you know sort of uh, people see themselves differently the way clowns are seeing people is actually revealing of mm -hmm. attitudes so i think this would be very 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 good well actually uh, this morning we had a supervisory board in poland a big country lots of hospitals there and they are just entering um to become an accreditation at the university in the in the uh, educational part of for medical staff. So. Fantastic. I, I have to uh, look a little bit on the on the on the watch. We are coming to to the end. There is one final question uh, from from the chat. Are the red noses active in Portugal? We are not active in Portugal, but there is a wonderful organization there, uh, Nanis Vermelho very good friends of us. We have been working with them uh, a lot. So we have been exchanging artistic directors and artists and uh, everybody can go to them. They will be very helpful. So that is where thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, we have listeners from, from typically over 20 countries. And of course, although obviously there is somebody from Portugal, <laughs> which we appreciate. And this is this is the, the contact. Thank you, Didier, for joining us. Thank you, Monica, for joining us. It was it was fantastic to have you here. I, I would like to close the, the session with thank you. thank you very much with um, with, a, with an output to the to the next to the next session. Um, no, first of all, I would also like to thank the, the technicians for for hosting the the conference, and I would like to, to thank again Schulke for for allowing us to, to to do this because without money there is there is nothing. At the last conference, uh, you might remember that Elke Schindler was reporting about her uh, endeavors to achieve the Hand Hygiene Excellence Award. And she already submitted most of the documents when she spoke to us a year ago. In the meantime, she was audited by Professor Pitté and she was awarded the Hand Hygiene Excellence Award in September at the ICPIC in Geneva. And you see this fantastic uh, picture of a, of, an ex, of a cheering and smiling team, Elke and, and her team, uh, which is extremely well deserved. They did a fantastic job. Um, she may be listening, but I, I know that she's on vacation this week. I spoke to her yesterday. And uh, our next Semmelweis talk will be on June 28th, again, Tuesday, 3 in the afternoon. And uh, the, one of the main topics will be uh, a short report of Elke how she achieved the hand hatching excellence uh, award and, and uh, which which uh, resume she could join, which effects she could take out of that. And we will add a couple of other topics. Um, and we hope to see all of you again in in June. Uh, we will then publish the dates of the of the uh, semi-wise talks after the summer. Um, the semi-wise talk will be available very soon for restreaming. Um, 
please let, let us remind you that we are a dynamic community and we would like to grow in our mission and also in our size. Spread the word, uh, share your thoughts on the social media, tell your colleagues about Semmelweis and the Semmelweis box and let's stay in touch. And um, with this, I would like to say goodbye to all of you. Thank you again. And there was a final question. And the question was, please play the video again because we couldn't hear anything. And now there is the video again with the sound. Thank you very much and see you next time.